Since 1984, Arkansas Business has been the state's business news authority, providing readers with the latest news and in-depth reporting on all things business in the state of Arkansas. Arkansas Business is also committed to honoring the individuals, companies, and organizations that are making an impact in the state of Arkansas. We live and work in the community, and we're committed to telling the stories of those who make Arkansas great. Today, we tell the story of Arkansas Business of the Year, our annual event to recognize the state's top executives, businesses, and nonprofits. Arkansas is home to some of the world's top companies and organizations. Their success is an inspiration to all of us and makes the case for Arkansas as one of the most vibrant business communities in the country. As long as there are people in Arkansas who are as spectacular as you, we want to be here to share your story. And now, the Arkansas Business of the Year Awards. Good evening. This is not on. Hello, good evening. Are we on? Let's start by clapping. How about that? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lance Turner. I'm the editor of Arkansas Business. And my name is Mitch Metis. I am the president and publisher of Arkansas Business. There we go. And we wanted to welcome you to the 35th annual Arkansas Business of the Year Awards program. 35 years. Yep. And we are ecstatic to celebrate tonight's honorees along with this year's Legacy of Leadership Award recipient, Mac McClarty, the chairman of the McClarty Companies. Yeah. This evening's event will feature plenty of exciting elements. We'll have crowd cams that will show you the attendees here in the room and our special Toast of the Town camera right. Right sponsored by the RLJ companies that will capture some of the offstage celebrations by the winners after they accept their awards. So this program began 35 years ago with a very simple purpose, to honor and celebrate the companies, the executives, the nonprofits across Arkansas, that are doing extraordinary work in an array of industries. It really is a statewide recognition. It is a statewide audience here tonight. And so we are excited to represent the four corners of this state and recognize people doing extraordinary things. So let me be the first to say congratulations to each of you in this room who've been recognized as outstanding in your particular business or organization. Congratulations. Yep. So throughout the program tonight, which I promise is scheduled to end at 9 p.m., you will be, I'm really convinced of this, I believe you're going to be inspired by the innovative and entrepreneurial spirit of the companies and the people who are represented in this room tonight. We are elated to be with you in this amazing ballroom, in this sold-out crowd to celebrate tonight, and we are consistently impressed through these 35 years, consistently impressed with the integrity and ingenuity of the Arkansans who are leading these organizations, leading these companies, and leading our communities. That's right. You're going to hear some great stories tonight right. uh, about companies that are doing wonderful things in Arkansas. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the sponsors of tonight's program. Without their generosity and support, frankly, this event would not That's be right. possible. So thank you very much. These sponsors are supporting this event because they support great businesses here in the state, and we are grateful for their partnership. Please hold your applause until everyone here has been introduced. We rolled out the red carpet this evening thanks to the red carpet sponsor, none other than the Dallas Cowboys. Boys. And thank you to the RLJ Company, sponsor of the Toast of the Town Cam. Mm -hmm. Thanks also to MHP Team SI, the sponsor of the all new Innovation Pace Setter category. And of course, AT&T, sponsor mm -hmm. of the Nonprofit Organization mm -hmm. of the Year category. We'd also like to thank our bronze sponsors, Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, Consolidated Admin Services, Delta Dental of Arkansas, Sheffield Nelson and Don Jack, Southern Bank Corp, and the University of Arkansas Clinton School of Public Service. We'd also like to recognize our production sponsor, CWP Productions, mm -hmm. and our digital marketing sponsor, Flex360, as well as the companies who purchase Skybox table packages in support of tonight's finalists, and they are listed here on your screen. That's right, Lance, and as a very special uh, recognition to our presenting sponsor, 
the Hatcher Agency, and United Healthcare. They have been longtime partners in this event, celebrating great businesses across the state. Earlier today, they also sponsored a luncheon where our finalists could have come together, meet each other, and celebrate. And they sponsored the reception in tonight's, uh, earlier uh, in the hallway out here, they sponsored tonight's reception. So the Hatcher Agency and United Healthcare have played a pivotal role in making this a success tonight and making all these honors and awards possible. And I thank them for their long-term partnership in this particular uh, program. To that end, I'd like to welcome to the stage the uh, representative from, Hale, from, from uh, Hatcher and Associates, Ms. Haley Hatcher Weaver. She's coming to congratulate the honorees and on, our, on, our behalf, on the behalf of Hatcher and Associates and the team at United Healthcare. So make welcome Haley Hatcher Weaver. Hello. You're going to do great. All right, good evening, everyone. I am so pleased to be able to speak to you on behalf of the Hatcher Agency and United Healthcare as a presenting sponsor for tonight's event, the 35th Arkansas Business of the Year Awards. Now, originally when I found out that my father, Greg Hatcher, was going to be out of town on the night of this event and that I would be the one speaking to you all, I politely said, no thank you, and um, <laughs> offered up my smoking hot husband instead. But um, as I do with my three-year-old at home, when we are a little bit worried about something or not sure how it's going to go, we like to sing, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. So I was talking to a friend about speaking at this event, and I hear my sweet little guy in the background singing, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. So I've decided to take those words to heart, and I'm actually very pleased to be up here speaking to you all tonight. This is a super easy sponsorship for us to say yes to because Arkansas Business does so much to promote and recognize all of the companies here in Arkansas. We really respect them and admire all that they do. And they're truly just the best of the best. And I'm sure you all would agree that they should be up for one of the awards tonight as well. Um, I want to congratulate all of the finalists in the five business of the year categories, the nonprofit organization of the year, the innovation pay setter, and the business uh, executive of the year. It is such a huge honor for you to even be in this room. So win or lose tonight, you should be very proud. Um, this is also a particularly exciting year for us to be sponsoring because Mac McClarty is getting the Legacy of Leadership Award. And in the words of my father, he is simply untouchable. He is a class act businessman, person, and friend of my father's. And to be seen the way that he is seen in today's political world is pretty much impossible. And honestly, the world needs some more leaders like Mac. So congrats, Mac, on being awarded that tonight. And um, at the Hatcher Agency, we like to live by this quote, if it's too tough for everyone else, it's just right for us. And I have no doubt that all of you entrepreneurs in the room are living by some similar type of motto in your companies. So if you weren't doing something different, you wouldn't be in this room. So congratulations to all of you for being here. It is such a big deal. And we are so grateful to be able to serve so many of you in the insurance world and serving your families. And also just so grateful to be a part of your special night tonight. So again, congratulations. Soak it up. Enjoy it. Have a glass of wine. And good luck, everybody. Uh, thank you, Haley. We appreciate that. Frankly, as well as Haley did, we may never invite Greg back. So uh, <laughs> well done. Uh, we appreciate that, Haley, and we appreciate the... Uh, partnership with you and uh, as well as United Healthcare. So now we're going to take a 15 minute break. We're going to begin serving dinner, and Lance and I'll be back up here in just a few minutes to get the program started. So enjoy your dinner. All right. Well, welcome back. I know it's uh, been a great evening so far, everybody visiting, getting to get reacquainted with everyone, and uh, we're welcome for you to continue doing that, but we're going to get the show rolling here. That's right. Let's go. Um, and continue with the 35th Arkansas Business of the Year Awards. For those of you here in the audience, please continue uh, your dinner while we continue with tonight's ceremony. 
We're going to start with my longtime colleague, Gwen Moritz, who is the former editor of Arkansas Business, who will introduce this year's distinguished panel of judges. Gwen? Hey, thank you. I have to show up every once in a while to let you know I am not retired. Um, still hanging out over at Arkansas Business, about less than full time. Anyway, this has been my role here for a long time to introduce the judges for this event, which I truly believe is the reason this event continues to be so popular. We bring in outside judges, people who, this hasn't always been the case, but in this year's uh, panel of judges, they've all been previous award winners. So they really want to keep the quality up of the award winners on this thing. It want, they, they don't want to be part of a, a club no one wants to join. <clears throat> so. I'm going to introduce the judges tonight. Uh, some of them are here. I don't think all of them are, but um, if, if you'll stand up when I introduce you, and then we'll all give you a round of applause. Our judges for this year's awards were Bill Soul of Soul Management, Kenny Kinley with the Adolfio Technology Partners, um, Matt Dozier of East Initiative. I know I've seen him tonight. And last year's Legacy Award winner, Sherman Tate of Tate & Associates. Thank you very much for your work on this. It's a hard job. Thanks. OK. <clears throat> Thank you, Gwen. And thanks again, yes, to all our judges. It is not an easy job to wade through all these nominations and to, to really give them all their due. So we appreciate their work. Uh, next, gender equality has been an important discussion at Arkansas Business for many years. Mm -hmm. Our founder and former CEO, Olivia Farrell, has always been passionate about creating an inclusive, fair work environment, advocating for equal pay for women, and for women to have a greater presence on our corporate boards of directors here in Arkansas. So on that note, please join me in welcoming Annabeth Gordon, who is the executive director of the Arkansas Women's Foundation, or the Women's Foundation of Arkansas, mm -hmm. rather as one of our special guests this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Mitch. Um, we are grateful that Arkansas Business is giving us the opportunity to once again be a part of the annual Business of the Year Awards. The Women's Foundation of Arkansas and Arkansas Business have a long, long history of partnership, owing in large part to former owner, Olivia Farrell. Not only was Olivia a trailblazer in the publishing industry, she helped found our organization, the Women's Foundation of Arkansas. In honor of our 25th anniversary, we are partnering once again with Arkansas Business on a very special publication, the Top 100 Women in Arkansas. 30 years ago, in a response to a male colleague's quip about there were not there not being enough qualified women to sit on boards of companies, Olivia responded, I'll show you 100. And so for the next five years, that's exactly what she did. She and Arkansas Business produced a list of the top 100 women, and they sent a whole list to every membership, um, everyone in the membership. So. On its fifth and final year, Olivia and then President and CEO of the Arkansas Community Foundation, Pat Lyle, they challenged these top 100 women to use their influence to support women who don't traditionally show up on lists. What happened was the founding of the Women's Foundation of Arkansas. This group of women each contributing $1,000 to be held in a fund at the Community Foundation. This small grant-making endowment seeded the humble beginnings of an organization which to date is leading the effort to help women secure economic mobility and security across the state. We are excited once again to be accepting nominations from across our state from women who are making a difference in their communities. Nominations are now open, and I checked I checked this week, and currently we have almost 600 nominations from 55 counties. So that's really exciting. 
the nomination process, you can go to Arkansas Business Soiree or to Women's Foundation. We are accepting nominations till March 17th, and we really want to see representation in all 75 counties. The top 100 women, uh, w the top 100 women publication will be delivered to Arkansas business subscribers later this spring. In helping promote this special publication of our anniversary year, we're pausing on our annual announcement of the recipient of the Olivia Farrell Gender Equity Leadership Award. The pandemic challenged the way we, everyone lived and worked, especially women. We are up working to update our gender equity scorecard to better reflect the needs of women in the workforce, taking into consideration lessons learned from the pandemic our updated gender equity scorecard will be open by September 1st, and we hope that you'll consider your business taking part. This is really important. It's going to be businesses in Arkansas that really take the lead on the work of equity in our state. Businesses that participate in this program are eligible to receive recognition at this very event, and we'll resume that next year. Thank you to Arkansas Business for our continued partnership, and we hope each of you consider nominating a woman that you know in your community or your business that's deserving of being recognized. And we hope and encourage you to participate in our Gender Equity Scorecard program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annabelle. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good stuff. Okay, thank you, Annabeth. We appreciate it. Uh, your partnership with us on these efforts and are glad to see you here again. Now it's time to honor this year's Arkansas Business of the Year finalists and find out tonight's winners. Tonight we'll honor finalists in five Business of the Year categories along with three other categories, okay. Business Executive of the Year, Nonprofit Organization of the Year, and as mentioned before, the new Innovation Pace Setter Award. In an effort to get more insight into these outstanding organizations, we've asked each finalist to film their company culture and their daily activities, and we'll see those videos here in just a few moments. We also ask that two representatives from the winning business or organization join us at the podium tonight to accept your award and make brief acceptance remarks. And then after the winners accept their award, they'll celebrate via our Toast of the Town camera, sponsored by the RLJ companies as they make their way off stage. Now, finally, on to the 35th Arkansas Business of the Year Awards. Please turn your attention to the screens to see the finalists in category one for businesses with up to 30 employees. AMR Architects of Little Rock has a reputation for creative and innovative design. Established in 1982, AMR stands for the initials of its founders, John Allison, Jimmy Moses, and Rick Redden. Today, the firm is led by partners Jonathan Opitz, Kate Redden East, Adam Day, and James Sullivan. Projects include the $33 million Student Engagement Center at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and the $36 million Mixed-Use Art Space Wingate Campus in Little Rock's East Village neighborhood. The firm relishes its mission to create buildings that enhance the work environment while providing joy in their everyday use. Engineering Compliance and Construction Incorporated of Little Rock is an engineering and environmental consulting firm marking its 30th anniversary this year. Its team of 22 staffers delivers cost-effective environmental solutions and project management in the areas of compliance, permitting, strategic planning, and sustainability. President Julie McAllister says the company aims for a small firm feel with big firm ability. Founded in 1983 by Stan Jorgensen, Bob Harrison, and Rod Brewer, the company specializes in air dispersion modeling, environmental compliance audits, hazardous waste permitting, erosion control, and more. Gentry Professional Services of Little Rock has provided top-tier experts to companies in aerospace, defense, systems engineering, and other industries since 2013. Brad Gentry's company has nine full-time consultants and 15 part-time consultants. Their mission? to fill a key role for a company, a role that is so specialized that perhaps only one or two people in the country fits the bill. His clients include government contractors with high level needs. Those clients have rewarded the business with its best year last year, with business up 50% from 2021. The company plan is to grow by a factor of 10 over the next four years. 
Now heading into its second season, the new Majestic Park Baseball and Softball Complex in Hot Springs has just about every amenity a youth, high school, or college player could want. That includes five baseball fields, lights, grandstands, dressing rooms, concessions, even a bronze statue of Babe Ruth, who swatted homers at the site a century ago when it was a spring training hub. CEO Derek Phillips guided the company through its first year last year. The park gives more than 800 local boys and girls a place to play ball. Last year, the Great American Conference Collegiate Tournament and the Fast Pitch America Softball Association World Series took place at the park. Portable Kitchens Incorporated of Little Rock makes the iconic PK Grill and Smoker. The rust-proof cast aluminum charcoal grill was created in 1952 in Texas, but after 20 years, production ended. But Little Rock lawyer Paul James restarted production and began selling them again in 1998. Brian Taylor, Scott Moody, and Jeff Humiston joined the ownership group in 2014, relaunching the brand. Taylor is now president and CEO. PK now employs 12 at a Southwest Little Rock distribution center. Revenue is coming in hot, up by 91% over 2019 and 2021. All right, let's give these Category 1 finalists a round of applause. And the winner of the Arkansas Business of the Year in Category 1 is Portable Kitchens Incorporated. Please welcome to the stage Heath Sorrells, General Manager, Martha James, a partner at PK Grills. Heath and Martha are thankful that PK is being honored for its strong ties to the Arkansas business community. And they're proud of everyone on their team who works hard to spread the word about their lifestyle grill brand across the country. And burgers on a PK grill just taste a little bit different and a little bit better, I would think. Let's see, if you want to stand, let's see right here. Right here, you're there. You're Martha, you're in there. Congratulations to PK person. Grills. Congratulations. Those other companies. Oh, oh, one second there. They'll get you online. Here, come up. There you go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, my name is Heath Sorrells. I'm the general manager at PK Grills. This is Martha James. And we were sitting back there with all these great companies being awarded in, in our category, and we're like, there's just no way. There's so many great companies here. And then they say your name, and then you're like, oh my gosh, we won. You gotta, and then you realize you got to come up here and talk in front of all you wonderful people. Uh, but I just want to say on behalf of myself, Martha, um, our board of directors, and all of our employees, um, this is great, and we say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. A great product and a great group, and we're glad they could join us tonight for... Uh, for this award. Yeah, that's fun. And uh, congratulations to PK Grills. And uh, so now here are the finalists for category two, businesses of 31 to 55 employees. <laughs> ARMI Contractors of Fayetteville is approaching its 20th year doing specialty process and utility piping work for food processing clients. Launched in 2003 by father and son Brett and Tyler Wolf, the business employs 55. Removing old machinery and installing new equipment laid the foundation for the family to add a manufacturing division to build food processing equipment. Looking ahead, the company plans to expand into the beverage and dairy segments. ARMI also has an industrial team that can deliver heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Tyson Foods Incorporated gave ARMI its Contractor of the Year Award in 2011. ARMI also has received awards for environmental practices from the City of Fayetteville and the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce. Envirotech Vehicles of Osceola is a California-born electric vehicle maker that moved to Northeast Arkansas in 2022 and hasn't looked back and reported its first profit last year. The company, with 40 employees, builds EVs in Arkansas for the fleet market 
and is looking to a future building school buses. It moved to Arkansas to be near the state's booming steel industry and port access. So far, Envirotech has worked with governments in Georgia and New Jersey to supply fleet vehicles. Its products include urban trucks, logistics vans, cutaway vans, and right-hand drive vans. Government incentives for switching to electric school buses are offering another road of opportunity. Evo Business Environments of Little Rock was founded in 2013 by Chris Serrato, who dreamed of owning and running a company built around people as passionate about the industry as he was. Ten years later, the company has 31 employees and more than $10 million in sales for the past two years. Its target market is companies that value their people, culture, and image so much that they are willing to invest in them, creating amazing, productive workspaces. The company has grown at an average annual rate of 26% during the past three years, and Serato hopes to continue that growth in Northwest Arkansas at the company's Rogers office. All right, let's give all of our uh, Category 2 finalists a round of applause. And the winner of the Arkansas Business of the Year in Category 2 is Evo Business. Please. Please welcome to the stage President and Owner Chris Serrato. President and Owner Chris Serrato says he's proud to work with all of the Evo companies, or employees rather, who come to work every day looking to make good things happen for other people, their customers, their co-workers, and their manufacturers. Congratulations to Evo. Congratulations. Wow. This is our second time. This is a big deal for us. I'm very, very proud, very honored to uh, win this award. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Arkansas Business. This is an amazing event they put on and uh, recognizing all the great companies in the state. I, th I think back about what is our secret sauce that makes us successful. And when we won it three years ago, it was people, all about people. And we only had 17 at the time. It's a little easier to have great a great team of people when there's only 17, and I wondered how is this going to happen as we grow. We have 31 people now, and it's all about the culture. And our number one goal, and we talk about this all the time, our number one goal, it's written down, is enjoy coming to work. And to do that, you've got to hire great people that, that you like working with. And we talk a lot about, uh, every Monday morning, we talk about when you wake up in the morning, think about what you're going to do great for other people today. So make good things happen for other people today rather than what are the people going to do for me. And that translates down all the way to how you treat your coworkers, your customers, and it really builds a successful team. So thank you to our folks. This is what it's all about. We have, we have rock stars on our team, and I appreciate everything they do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, congratulations to Evo. That's right, absolutely. Congratulations to Evo Business Environments. I'd now like to introduce you to the finalists in Category 3. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> the finalists in Category 3 is to 150 employees. Acre Trader of Fayetteville has been growing rapidly since its launch in 2019 founder and CEO Carter Malloy built a platform for investors to purchase and sell a fraction of a farm. Since then, the investing service has put more than $300 million into more than 100 farms in 19 states and Australia. Acre Trader has also grown by adding timberland to its portfolio and has plans to offer recreational land next. Malloy credits the company's results to its workers and says the company holds to an intense commitment to transparency and personal growth. So far, Acre Trader has raised more than $80 million in venture capital, and it's gone from about 60 employees a year ago to 125 today. The Keith Smith Company of Hot Springs is the largest independent producer and provider of broiler hatching eggs in the nation. Its staff of 136 supplies quality hatching chicks from Canada to Panama. 
Founded by Smith's grandfather in 1948, the company shares family connections that extend to customers and growers who are into their third generation as well. Its network of contract growers operates 165 houses across 70 farms in seven Arkansas counties. The business had a humble beginning. The company's late founder, J. Keith Smith, took a one-room feed store with an incubator and turned it into a multi-million dollar business. He was inducted into the Arkansas Agriculture Hall of Fame in 2014. The Tolm Group of Moralton is a diversified construction and engineering service provider working commercial, civil, industrial, and water and wastewater projects. Formerly known as Crow Group, Tolm employs 96 people who serve Arkansas and a dozen surrounding states. It added the Springdale office in March 2022. Its portfolio encompasses the timber and poultry industries, airports, tourism construction, offices, and retail development. Its biggest sector, accounting for 70% of revenue, is water wastewater treatment facility work. The company has received its share of awards. It received an Associated Builders and Contractors Excellence in Construction Award for the Arkansas Tourist Information Center at White River off Interstate 40, which opened in 2017. All right, let's give these Category 3 finalists a round of applause. And the winner of the Arkansas Business of the Year in Category 3 is Acre Trader. Please welcome to the stage founder and CEO Carter Malloy, coming from way in the back there. The team at Acre Trader says they are thrilled to be among such esteemed Arkansas businesses tonight and that they're proud to work with incredible employees, partners, and community members. And their growth here in just the last couple of years has been amazing to watch and, and to write about. And uh, we're excited to see where it all goes. Congratulations. Please welcome Acre Trader. Thank you. Uh, first is a shout out to PK Grills. Y'all make great grills. <laughs> if y'all don't own one, buy one. It's good and, and they last forever. Fantastic Arkansas product. Uh, look, we're, we're flattered and proud to be here. We're a, a young and very small company. Uh, with great ambitions to continue to help farmers and investors alike throughout the country and throughout the international community. Uh, I'm joined here with my friend Jonathan Shively. We've been working together for 17 years, we realized tonight, uh, starting at Stevens uh, a long time ago. We were very lucky to work then. Uh, and yeah, just look, I'm appreciative of the people I get to work with every day, most importantly. I, that's the reason that we're both here, is we get to work with brilliant, creative, uh, wonderful human beings that really want to build a build a business and uh, make a difference, grow and continue to learn themselves. So, thank you all for the opportunity to be here. Thank you to Arkansas Business as well, especially. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. Congratulations to the team at Acre Trader. That's a great story. Now, here are the finalists in category four. Those are businesses with 151 to 499 employees. Take a look at the screen. ATG USA of North Little Rock was founded in 1994 as a small computer services company. These days, its rapid growth continues with an average annual growth rate of 30% in the past three years. The company is a leading national partner in software, hardware, services, and support for the architecture, engineering, and construction industries, specifically selling and supporting computer-aided design software. President and General Counsel Ben Hollowell says ATG's 177 employees deliver increasingly important technology, software that designs everything from the roads you drive on to the building you're sitting in. The benchmark group of Rogers had a banner year in 2022. The engineering and architectural firm posted revenue growth of more than 30 percent. 
prompting the company to hire more than 50 new employees in the past year to bring the company's roster to nearly 240. Those hires have put an emphasis on robust training for newbies and veterans alike. The company hires from outside, but also likes to promote from within. Joey Wilder, the architectural director for the company's Dallas office, was recently promoted to Benchmark's executive team. The company is licensed in all 50 states and the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. The company plans to open a new regional office this year. First Orion of North Little Rock has a hunger for innovation, not only for its technology, but also its working environment. The company builds branded calling technology and software that protects from scams, fraud, and spoof calls. With an average annual growth rate of 28% for the past three years, First Orion primarily serves large enterprises, but it plans to start a self-service portal where businesses of all sizes can brand their calls. The company is constantly on the hunt for tech talent and has grown to more than 400 employees. It started an apprenticeship program that trains local talent to keep that tech talent here in Arkansas. Pafford Medical Services Incorporated of Hope began as a small family business in 1967. Today, it's one of the largest private ambulance providers in the country, providing advanced life support emergency ambulance services to more than 80 locations, with 230 ambulances in five states and the U.S. Virgin Islands. In Arkansas, Pafford Medical has about 500 employees and about 1,600 workers under all its brands. COVID was a difficult time for the ambulance industry, but in 2021, Pafford received the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians Dick Furneaux EMS Career Service of the Year Award for the company's work during the pandemic and Pafford Gresham's advocacy for rural EMS service. Let's give, uh, let's give all of our Category 4 finalists a round of applause. There are some tremendous companies in that group, but this year's Arkansas Business of the Year Category 4 honoree is Pafford Medical Services. So please welcome to the stage President and CEO Jamie Pafford Gresham and COO Clay Hobbs. Congratulations. The Pafford team says they are thankful for the men and women that are the face of Pafford in their communities who work daily in the 17 counties across Arkansas where they operate. Managing emergencies for a living isn't easy, of course, but they do it without hesitation. Please welcome the Pafford team. Hello. This is such an honor. Um, most people don't think about an ambulance until they call 911 and need it, and 911 and actually need it, and then they wonder where it's coming from. And we like to be ahead of the curve. And, you know, I love to say that our men and women of Pafford are the Swiss Army knife of healthcare professionals, and we are the safety net in so many of our rural communities around Arkansas. I am blessed to be up here representing the men and women of Pafford today, and uh, it's not been an easy road. And as you guys know, we manage emergencies for a living, and there's a lot of ups and downs in this, but this right here makes it all worth it. So thank you to our sponsors tonight. Thank you to your, you guys. Um, this is just such an honor. Thank you for letting us be a part. Congratulations. You bet. Go have a you bet. All right, congratulations again and enjoy your evening. And let's say there's a toast right there for everybody. Congratulations uh, to Jamie Pafford, Pafford Gresham and her team. Now we'd like to introduce the finalists in category five. This is businesses of more than 500 employees. ArcBest Corporation of Fort Smith will mark its 100th anniversary this year. Fiscal 2022 earnings surpassed a $5 billion revenue goal, breaking the record of $3.9 billion set in 2021. CEO Judy McReynolds now aims to surpass $7 billion in revenue in fiscal 2025. When Reynolds took over in 2010, she set a course to add more logistics and brokerage services to ArcBest's arsenal. The company improved the benefits package for its 14,000 employees and launched an employee learning platform. That's fitting for its 100th anniversary theme, Heart of 100, 
which puts employees at the center of ArcBest's success. Arkansas Children's started as an orphanage in 1912. Today, it's the state's only health care system solely dedicated to caring for children. In 2020, it launched a strategic plan to develop Health Care Without Walls. It organized the Arkansas Children's Nursery Alliance and coordinates the Arkansas Home Visiting Network, school-based clinics and dental vans that go into communities across the state. It's also addressing other challenges children may face, such as food insecurity or transportation and financial and health literacy challenges. CEO Marcy Doderer says the ultimate dream is to have Arkansas be the state where it is healthiest to be a child. Founded in 2002 by Todd and Amy Denton, Pediatrics Plus of Little Rock began with only eight employees and 16 clients. Two decades later, it has 11 locations and more than 1,000 employees. The specialized pediatric health care service provides developmental, preschool, and therapy services to children with special needs. In recent years, it launched The Farm, in which children can receive applied behavioral analysis therapy and sensory opportunities outside of a clinic environment. It also has a partnership with Washita Baptist University of Arkadelphia to create a master's degree in applied behavioral analysis to battle the shortage of certified therapists. Rock Dental Brands of Little Rock kept growing in 2022 and set the stage for more expansion. The company supports a network of general dentists and dental specialists in about 100 clinics across five states. Last year, it secured $45 million in credit commitments from Twin Brook Capital Partners of Chicago, which CEO Christy Crum says will fuel plans for smart, stable expansion. The announcement followed a year of acquisitions that brought more than a dozen new clinics into the fold. It now has 735 employees. All the while, the company has focused on advice from its founder to focus on taking great care of the patient, and the business will take care of itself. Travel Nurse Across America of North Little Rock is not just for nurses anymore. In the last year, the company expanded its services to place allied health professionals, such as speech, physical, and occupational therapists in facilities nationwide. Founded in 1999, the company had focused primarily on placing traveling nurses in acute care facilities in all 50 states for 13-week assignments. Today, it has around 4,000 contract health care workers and facilities, putting it in the top 10 of the largest health care staffing agencies. It has 574 corporate employees. Revenue was expected to jump about 60% in 2022 over 2021 figures. Let's give a uh, big round of applause for all the Category 5 finalists. And the Arkansas Business of the Year in Category 5 is Pediatrics Plus. Please welcome to the stage the company's founders, Todd and Amy Denton. Todd and Amy say that Pediatrics Plus is honored to be here tonight, and the team is excited to continue its mission of empowering children to conquer the world. Congratulations to Pediatrics Plus. Well, I was actually prepared to do nothing tonight. And I asked, told Amy if we actually did win, I'd like for her to talk and she, to stand behind her and be the eye candy, but she, she declined. But what started in our upstairs bedroom over 20 years ago has developed into quite the business. And as many of you know, most of your business owners out here and operators, it's all about people. Um, working with children is a calling, but working with special needs kids is definitely a calling. And we have some of the most amazing people in the world working for us. We're so proud of what they've done and what they've accomplished, and we're proud of what they do every single day to help the families of Arkansas who have kids with developing needs and special needs. So thank you for the uh, honor, we don't deserve it, but we're, we're certainly glad to be here. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. 
All right, congratulations again, and we're glad that you could join us this evening and uh, celebrate some success tonight because of all for all the good work that you that you're doing in a, at a fast growing organization. That's right. As well. It's exciting so. to see. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have a finalist in the nonprofit organization of the year category, presented by our friends at AT and T. Arkansas Support Network of Springdale provides direct support services to about 500 developmentally disabled people in Arkansas. CEO Sired Evans says the people who need and receive the organization's services are its true leaders. When the pandemic hit in 2020, the organization did some introspection and came out of it truly focused on the individuals it's designed to help. She says that today, instead of making decisions about the people it supports and what services need to look like, the organization strives to give decision-making power to its clients. The Accelerate Foundation of Rogers was created by the sale of Springdale Memorial Hospital and Bates Memorial Hospital in 1998. To date, it has donated more than $110 million to causes in Northwest Arkansas. Examples include a $40 million fund for low-income housing and Upskill NWA, a $3 million investment and partnership with the Walton Family Foundation to retrain workers for high-demand industries. The foundation also aims to help people who are considered asset-limited, income-constrained, and employed. Accelerate also operates PARC, in partnership with United Way to quickly connect people with social services. Goodwill Industries of Arkansas works to change lives through education, training, and employment. That mission will expand through its Excel Center, which provides students 19 and older the chance to earn a high school diploma through flexible eight-week schedules, five times a year, free of charge. In the spring, Goodwill will open its second Excel Center, adding the school will allow Goodwill to serve up to 700 students per year. Goodwill also offers workforce training services and certifications for unemployed or underemployed Arkansans. It also provides employment services, and it helps formerly incarcerated people re-enter the workforce. Habitat for Humanity of Greater Jonesboro envisions a world where everyone has a decent place to live. The organization, led since 2014 by Executive Director Michael Sullivan, works toward that goal through three main programs. New construction, through which families in need can apply for a no-interest mortgage to build a new home. Repair, through which the organization will provide critical repairs to existing homes. And Restore, a home improvement store and donation center that sells gently used furniture, appliances, home accessories, building materials, and more. Founded in 2008, Immerse Arkansas of Little Rock aims to help kids who are aging out of the foster care system. Now, at its center on Asher Avenue in Little Rock, youngsters 14 to 24 can come for help without jumping through a bunch of hoops. The assistance starts with basics like food and clothing, showers and laundry facilities. They also get paired with a coach to put together a life plan, a job and stable housing. The nonprofit and its 100 volunteers have served 300 young people in the past 12 months. It expects to break ground this spring on a shelter in Little Rock with plans for another five around the state. What an impactful group of organizations. And before we present our uh, winner tonight, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, Lisa Lake, the area manager for AT&T, who's going to help us present this recognition to the uh, nonprofit organization. But let's first give a round of applause to all of those who are honored tonight. And the nonprofit organization of the year is Immerse Arkansas. Please welcome to the stage Executive Director Eric Gilmore. As the winner of the nonprofit organization of the year category, Immerse will receive a gift of $2,500 from our friends at AT&T. Eric says, yes. Eric says he is proud of all the hard work of the young people that Immerse ser serves and is glad that they are being honored tonight at this special event this evening.
Let's congratulate Immerse Arkansas. You bet. Wow. Wow. Man. Mm. Man, thank you. What an honor. Um, I truly mean it. Um, first, huge thanks to our team and board, a couple of our young people who are over here. If y'all just help me give them a hand for all the hard work that they do all the time. <clears throat> I, I truly believe that the real story here and uh, that just the really special thing is the recognition for the hard, tenacious work that the young people that we serve do day in and day out to overcome. We serve 14 to 24 year olds who are aging out of foster care, they're runaway, they're homeless, maybe they're growing up in the foster care system and don't know what to do. I know if you're like me, 10, 20 years ago, I hadn't thought about what happens to kids who aren't adopted or kids who, uh, uh, teens where home isn't a safe place. And these young people go at it day after day, one step at a time, putting their life together, often on their own. But now with Immerse, the support of Arkansas, with the support of the community, uh, people and the tools they need to succeed. So super proud of them. Hope you'll get to know them. Um, hey, there's so much uh, more that we want to do as we think about the needs around the state uh, for these young people. Uh, part of my job is to ask for help. So I'm just going to ask for help. Hey, uh, we want to build a shelter specifically for young adults, 18 to 24 year olds. We don't think they should be on the streets. We have great adult homeless shelters here. We don't think they should be in adult homeless shelters. So we're hoping to break ground in a few weeks. And we'd love your help to, to help make that a reality. Um, thank you all so much. It's an incredible honor. So we're so grateful. Thank you. Congratulations. You bet. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, one help they already have is AT&T just gave them $2,500. So yep. that's not so bad that's either. So that's pretty good. So. Well, congratulations to the team at Immerse. And thank you to our longtime sponsor, AT&T, for continuing this partnership with us. The uh, next category um, we are presenting are, is the Executive of the Year. Turn your attention to the screen. Ortho Arkansas CEO Levi Bauer had wanted to be in the business world since he was 12. Before becoming CEO of physician-owned Ortho Arkansas in June 2019, Bauer was Division Director for Orthopedic, Spine, and Neurosciences at CHI Health in Omaha, Nebraska. Since joining Ortho Arkansas, he has seen its revenue rise from about $63 million in 2019 to more than $90 million in 2022. But he said his greatest accomplishment has been helping increase employee satisfaction scores to very positive levels. Bauer said that if you can take care of employee satisfaction, that takes care of most everything else. Stratus CEO Jordan Franklin co-founded the talent management firm with her husband, Scott, in 2015. After a big growth year in 2021, she knew 2022 would be challenging. Indeed, Stratus continued to do robust business and even picked up Tyson Foods Incorporated as a client to help with its One Tyson Relocation Initiative. Franklin said all the success made her wonder if she was the one who needed to be in charge. But she soon gained confidence that she was right making sure the company didn't change even as it grew employment nationally and internationally. It now has employees in India and new offices in Little Rock and Birmingham, Alabama. Gentry Professional Services CEO Brad Gentry was an elementary school student in Benton in 1986 when he and the world witnessed the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger. That was the day Gentry decided to become an engineer, seeking ways to use knowledge to better the world around us. Today, Gentry Professional Services finds elite, specialized engineers for companies ranging from defense and cybersecurity to aerospace and intelligence around the world. That novel approach caught on quickly. Despite remarkable success in engineering, Gentry considers starting the company his greatest accomplishment. In 2011, Bruce Murphy had a choice, continue practicing medicine or be the CEO of Arkansas Heart Hospital in Little Rock. To comply with a new federal law, Murphy couldn't do both. So he chose to be the CEO, ending a nearly 30-year career as a respected cardiologist. Under Murphy's leadership, the specialty hospital hasn't missed a beat. It opened the $55 million Encore Medical Center in Bryant in 2021, and with about 1,400 employees, Arkansas Heart Hospital has grown to about 30 clinics. Murphy said more clinics are planned in and outside of Arkansas, and at 70, he has no plans to retire. 
Pafford Medical Services Incorporated CEO Jamie Pafford Gresham was born into the ambulance business. Her parents formed the company that would become Pafford Medical Services of Hope in 1967. She took over the company's Arkansas locations as CEO in 1997. She and her brothers, Greg Pafford and John Pafford, have since expanded it into companies providing emergency ambulance services to more than 80 locations with 230 ambulances in five states and the U.S. Virgin Islands. In Arkansas, Pafford Medical has just under 500 employees that include paramedics, nurses, and dispatchers. Let's give all of our Business Executive of the Year honorees a round of applause. And the winner of the Arkansas Business Executive of the Year is Dr. Bruce Murphy of the Arkansas Heart Hospital. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Bruce Murphy, who's got a lot of supporters in the room tonight, including folks from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And uh, it's been something to watch that Arkansas Heart Hospital grow. Congratulations. You bet. Dr. Bruce Murphy. Well, thank you very much for this very nice honor. Uh, you start off your life just trying to live your life, and you never try and seek honors. But with this group of business executives that are represented in this category, I'm very humbled uh, to be here. Um, helping people is what our motto is, and surrounding yourself with people that want to help people is really what uh, my life has been about and what our ambitions have been about. Um, I'm very grateful to live in Arkansas because there's a very strong entrepreneurial spirit of wanting to help and wanting to be successful simultaneously. And so it's with that, that humility that I would say thank you very much. We're delighted to be here. We're delighted to represent our state. And we're delighted to be able to help the citizens of Arkansas. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Congratulations. <laughs> that's good for your heart. That, that is, that's, that's, that's good. You that's, drink a lot of that. That's, that's very good healthy. For, keeps things going. That's very healthy. Yep, it's very, very healthy. Uh, now we are excited to honor the finalist in a new category for us, the Innovation Pace Setter category. We launched this program. We've been thinking about this program for many years, and we launched it recently as a way to uh, acknowledge and celebrate the innovative companies uh, throughout our state. Now, we think of innovation in this category in several ways. It really applies to all kinds of businesses. Here are the three big ways we think about this. Innovation can come from an older, more established, traditional company that might be pioneering a, a new technology, a new market, or transforming a company in a unique way. We also think of innovation as some new company that might have a breakthrough technology that's reshaping a particular industry. And that's something we find incredibly valuable to celebrate those, uh, uh, those particular situations. But perhaps also it is a new product that is developed, that is disrupting an old market in a new and meaningful way. So a lot of different types of companies can be celebrated as innovative in this state. So we are excited to welcome to the stage uh, the CEO of a company that is celebrating a 50-year anniversary milestone while reinventing itself multiple times throughout this journey. Please welcome to the stage Sharon Talek Vogelpohl, the president and CEO of MHP CHI. Sharon. Congratulations. Hello. 
Thanks, Mitch. In honor of our 50th anniversary, as we like to call it, not an anniversary, we are so excited to partner with you to celebrate innovation in business tonight. At MHP Team SI, we like to say that innovation lives here and that innovation is an infinite process, whether you're an older company or a newer company just starting out. No matter where you are in that process, it requires energy, passion, and maybe the hardest part, particularly for some of us that, and those of you who know me, the willingness to fail and reinvent. I heard a motivational speaker recently that gave me some really great advice, so I'm going to share it with you tonight. He said, when people ask you about how business is, which they inevitably will, you probably got that question amongst yourselves tonight, there's always one answer that's easy, clear, and probably most importantly true, no matter what, where you are on that roller coaster that we call business. That answer is unbelievable. Think about it. No matter what's going on, landed a huge new account. Unbelievable. Just hit a speed bump and had to go back to the drawing board. Unbelievable. Just hit your revenue goal for the whole year in September. Unbelievable. Or your business is a finalist for the first ever Arkansas Business of the Year Innovation Award. Unbelievable. See, works every time. Now let's hear more about our amazing finalists that are doing some unbelievably innovative things. Thanks. Acre Trader Incorporated of Fayetteville suggests that maybe it's time for a boring investment, but don't let that tagline fool you. CEO Carter Malloy has created a financial resource for farmers who want to expand their acreage and made a tangible asset class readily available to accredited investors. About half of Acre Trader's employees are software engineers because the technology that allows investors to choose land, invest, and then profit is a huge part of the business. Angel Eye Health connects parents and their babies in neonatal intensive care units with a virtual visitation experience through secure webcam technology. The idea for Angel Eye, launched in 2013, was formed in 2006. Dr. Curtis Lowry wanted to connect parents to their babies during the sometimes months long in ICU stays. In 2022, Inc. Magazine put Angel Eye Health on its Inc. 5000 list of America's fastest growing private companies. Today, it's on track to deliver nearly 10 million virtual visits between parents and their babies this year. Bond AI of Little Rock uses artificial intelligence to help consumers enhance their financial health without moving from their home bank. Its algorithms analyze financial, non-financial, and intangible data to increase engagement between consumers and their financial institutions, generating hyper-personalized profiles for each client. The company has experienced quick growth, launching a partnership with Fidelity National Information Services in 2019 and expanding its product line through partnerships with TAB Bank of Utah and First Citizens Bank of North Carolina in 2020. Ox of Bentonville is an innovator in supply chain technology but its work revolves around people. Founded in 2019 by Charu Thomas, Ox describes itself as the world's first human-centered automation company. It has pioneered an operator experience, from which the name Ox is derived, that directs supply chain operators using software automation, artificial intelligence, and wearable displays. The technology uses smartwatches and mobile devices to improve efficiency in operations, training, and elsewhere. Started in 2011, Ozark Integrated Circuits of Fayetteville provides integrated circuits and related products for extreme environment electronics. The company's extreme nodes are single board computers that can work in extreme heat, cold, or vibration in projects ranging from jet engines to thermal wells. Founded by Matt Francis, the company aims to make products that can work on the fringes of where electronics can perform. Its biggest market is aerospace. The company's X nodes have been used on the International Space Station and worked with companies including Honeywell International and Texas Instruments. Teslar Software of Springdale has been innovating since Joe Earhart founded it as 3E Software in 2008. Earhart's goal? To allow community banks to seem more sophisticated than the giant banks when a client deals with them on lending. The company boomed amid the pandemic. Teslar gained 50 new client banks in 90 days in 2020 when its software was used to process more than 20% of paycheck protection loans. Teslar also worked with billionaire Mark Cuban to develop a website to help PPP recipients apply for loan forgiveness. 
Uh, how about a hand for uh, all of these innovative companies? And the uh, award for the inaugural Innovation uh, Pace Setter Award goes to Ozark Integrated Circuits. We'd like to welcome to the stage uh, the President and CEO Matt Francis and Director of Product Development, uh, let's see, um, uh, Silka Spicifer as well. Ozark Integrated Circuits has multiple active patents and many more patents that are pending, and they are a world leader in harsh environment electronic packaging and electronic solutions, places where no person could survive, but their circuits can do it. Congratulations to Ozark Integrated Circuits. Hi, well, as a common theme here, um, you know, a big congratulations goes to our team members at Ozark Integrated Circuits, and it's an absolute honor to accept this award. And the first, being the first um, one and recipient to receive this award. So thank you so much. And again, our team works hard, and we will continue to work hard to make um, engineering great in Arkansas. So, um, and on behalf of Matt Francis, our CEO, and Ozark Integrated Circuits, we thank you and we're honored to receive the board. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, congratulations to Ozark Integrated Circuits on their win and the exciting things that they've got in the works. A really lot some, of some exciting really things, things that they're uh, that doing. Are there. So. That's a lot of fun. Stuff in space. They have things that are going to space. That's uh, I can barely spell space. So uh, uh, you yeah, see what you those go. engineers are doing yep. is pretty exciting. Yep. And so, congratulations. So as we come to the last recognition of the evening, we have saved what we consider our most special recognition for this particular moment. So we've been doing this program for 35 years, and after three decades of honoring extraordinary businesses doing extraordinary things, we wanted to establish a unique recognition to recognize a lifetime of leadership service to this state, to executives who have long served this particular community. So we established the Legacy of Leadership Honor that we are celebrating here tonight, and it is reserved uniquely for those people who have made a a specific and unique contribution and impact on the state of Arkansas. Only four other leaders in our state have received this special recognition. Uh, many of them you may know. And tonight, Mr. Mac McClarty will be our uh, special recognition tonight for the Legacy of Leadership Award. Predating Mr. McClarty are legendary leaders such as um, uh, Simmons Bank Executive Tommy May. Many of you know Tommy and his profound impact in the state, who was recognized in 2019. He was followed by KFC franchisee and uh, banker in the state, Mr. Wallace Fowler, who was recognized for his contributions in 2020. That was followed by an exceptional businesswoman and philanthropist, Ms. John L. Hunt, who was recognized for her long contribution to this state in 2020. 21. And last year, we were able to recognize a man who has had a profound impact in this state, both in business and building community, who happened to be one of our judges this year as well, Mr. Sherman Tate, who was recognized in 2022. <laughs> to help us introduce Mr. McClarty, I'd like to invite to the stage Mr. McCarty's colleague and friend, Steve Ronell, to the podium to say a few words about Mr. McClarty's impact on this state, and then that will be followed by a legacy tribute video. So come on up, Mr. Ronell. So prior to joining his family business, Metal Recycling Corporation of Little Rock, in 1999, uh, Steve worked in Washington, D.C. for nearly a decade. He was the legislative aide 
to U.S. Senator David Pryor and served in the Clinton White House as a special advisor to the President and a senior advisor to our Legacy of Leadership recipient, Mr. Mac McClarty. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Um, let's give a big round of applause to Mitch and Lance for doing the great job tonight. D dare I say, almost as entertaining as Chris Rock and Will Smith on awards ceremonies. Well done, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to start by congratulating all the nominees and all the award winners. And I'd like to add that I hope tonight in the room that no one finds themselves ever needing a Pafford ambulance to take them to Arkansas Heart Hospital while using their PK grill. <laughs> but if you do, you'll be in very good hands. So my name is Steve Ronell, and it's my honor to introduce tonight's Legacy and Leadership Award winner. Uh, before I do, I'd like to recognize a couple uh, dignitaries in the audience today. Former Governor and U.S. Senator David Pryor is here tonight. <laughs> Senator Pryor, could you down front? There he is. And he's here with former First Lady of Arkansas, Barbara Pryor. Barbara, glad to see you. And I guess it's a, I guess it's a family affair because former U.S. Senator Mark Pryor and his wife Joy are here tonight. Mark. When I was 28 years old, Mac McClarty gave me the opportunity of a lifetime when he asked me to join him on President Clinton's team at the White House. This opportunity gave me exposure to the highest levels of government and politics in our country. But more importantly, it gave me direct exposure to the professional life and the personal life of Mac McClarty. And it introduced me to his not so secret weapon, his amazing wife, Donna McClarty. Donna, it's good to see you here tonight. And also to their impressive sons, Mark and Franklin, who are here tonight as well. Mark, Franklin, good to see you both. <laughs> Mac and I traveled many roads together, including trips to over 20 foreign countries, where I watched Mac McClarty serve our nation with great skill and distinction as a shuttle diplomat, promoting free and fair trade, open markets, and the deepening of our partnerships around the globe. Watching Mac McClarty perform his unique version of statescraft in meetings with dignitaries and foreign heads of state, what I witnessed was an Arkansas gentleman using his Arkansas education and his vast Arkansas-honed business and relationship skills on an international stage to perfection. He always called them Mr. President or Madam President, and they just called him Mac. Mac McClarty treats everyone he encounters with decency, civility, and respect. And he approaches every endeavor with a dedicated commitment to doing things the right way and with an unwavering pursuit of excellence. In my view, Mac McClarty embodies how we should all strive to run our businesses and live our lives together. So with all due apologies to basketball legend Michael Jordan, we should all try to be like Mac. <laughs> be kind and thoughtful like Mac. Handle your relationships like Mac. Be true to your faith like Mac. Give back generously to your community like Mac. And be there for your family like Mac. Another great Arkansas diplomat, U.S. Senator J. William Fulbright once said, if America has a service to perform in the world, it is in large part the service of her own example. Ladies and gentlemen, if Mac McClarty has performed a service to Arkansas, it has been in large part the service of his own example. He is a global ambassador for Arkansas, for our business community, and for everything good and decent Arkansas represents as a people and as a state. Mac, we are honored to have you home to accept this prestigious award from Arkansas Business, and we thank you we thank you for the power of your example. I had the good fortune 
and indeed the blessing of growing up in a place called Hope uh, in the 1950s and 1960s. It was a time of hope, and I was a beneficiary of that. I had wonderful parents, uh, loving parents, supportive parents, uh, Helen and Frank McClarty. My father was just, you know, he was just a wonderful mentor, and he kind of let me make some mistakes and to learn from them, and he had enough patience and confidence to do that. My mother was uh, my kindest critic and my best cheerleader. She felt like people were pulling for you, and they cared about you. Mrs. Williams, my student council sponsor and English teacher, taught me how to organize things, prioritize things, follow through, your word was important. She recommended me for the Hearst uh, Fellowship in Washington, and that was a, a life-changing moment at 17 to go to Washington, spend a month, first time I had the privilege to meet a president of the United States, members of the cabinet, and it really reinforced the right kind of values. I made a decision to attend the University of Arkansas, tried to be a pretty serious student. I finished number three in my class, was involved in student government there, but most importantly, I met my wife of now a half century. Went back to Hope after graduating. I had worked summers in our family business, in our truck shop, and that's about when I decided I was gonna go into business, uh, but I, I liked it. I mean, I enjoy work and I enjoyed building things and working with people. Just having the good fortune to, to have those opportunities, to have people who believed in me grateful for that. Took a deep breath and decided to run for state representative. And people in Hempstead County and Hope kind of expected me to run. So Don and I really worked hard. I think we truly went to every house in the county twice. I was fortunate to go to the legislature at 24. Many older people would say, well, we need to give the next generation a chance. It became surprisingly apparent to me that my age was a positive attribute. I had an opportunity to go uh, on the ARCLA Gas Board of Directors and on the Commercial National Bank Board of Directors. So I really got to know the company, got to know the people, got to know the industry, saw the changes, all of that, uh, well before I joined the company full time. And a few years later, the board approached me about being chairman and chief executive of ARCLA. And it was a great privilege to to lead a Fortune 500 company. President George H.W. Bush uh, appointed me to be a member of the uh, Council on Environmental Quality, which was kind of the early stages of the environmental uh, stewardship movement. It really broadened my horizon in, in a substantial way. David Pryor ran for governor. David asked me to be his campaign treasurer, and I was pretty young. I was and he asked me to be chairman of the Arkansas Democratic Party and serve on the National Committee. And then my friend of long standing, Bill Clinton, I had not ever worked directly in Governor Clinton's administration. So I was surprised the day after the election when he asked me to serve as chief of staff. Being chief of staff to the President of the United States, uh, it's a demanding job. It's the chief javelin catcher, because it happens so quickly, I had not anticipated it. There's so many things to get in order. I think, you know, from a public service standpoint, I, I truly think the most meaningful thing, moment to me, was was when you meet someone who a welfare to work initiative that you helped to concept and pass has been affected and their lives have been changed. So then I spent six and a half years in the White House. The last 20 years, I've really divided my time uh, essentially in our family business endeavors, which are transportation, uh, uh, automotive, and then in, in McCarty Associates, which is a strategic advisory firm in Washington. Running a, a small business or your own business is just as challenging as running General Motors. I mean, it's different kinds of challenges, but in some ways it might even be maybe more difficult. So I just have a lot of respect for businesses and people that have that spirit uh, to do something like that. So I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it or any cookie cutter approach. You just have to be true to yourself. Follow your, your path, what you feel is right for your life and career, but stay connected to who you are. I haven't given a lot of thought to legacy, but that translates uh, into trying to be the best son, 
brother, uh, husband, father, and now grandfather that you can be. Mark, our older son, really was a pioneer in uh, his endeavors in Brazil, uh, Mexico, and China, really cutting edge, way ahead of his time. Franklin's been involved in <clears throat> a number of ventures outside the automotive sector, had the privilege to serve on the AEDC, uh, appointed by Governor Beebe, became chairman, and uh, has a natural, I think, interest and knack for that type of uh, economic development. We just have so much to be grateful for uh, in Arkansas, and that, that's just kind of who we are as a family, and Arkansas will always be home. It's been a much broader world and experience than I ever would have dreamed uh, when I was growing up in Hope or even earlier in my career. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to uh, introduce Mr. Mac McClarty as he joins us on stage. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. When I was growing up, there was a popular television program called This Is Your Life, hosted by Ralph Edwards. Guests would come on and the host would surprise them by celebrating their lives with a live studio audience, with appearances from colleagues and family and friends. People laughed and people cried. And I remember being captivated by that program, even as a little boy. But you know where I'm going. I certainly never expected to have my own version of This Is Your Life in the Wally Allen Ballroom in Little Rock, Arkansas. I am genuinely honored, uh, truly humbled, and indeed touched. How could I not be? Steve Rennell, thank you for a very warm, personal, and generous introduction. It's always good to have a loyal friend and your press person introduce you at an affair like this one. It works pretty well. More broadly, Steve, thank you and your family for the rich tradition which Rex Nelson profiled today in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette of the contributions that you've made to our state and you're continuing that legacy. Mitch Bettis, you run a good show. You and Lance are a great team. Thank you for hosting us tonight and for all you've done to make this evening so special for everyone here all of the honorees and all of the nominees who have been recognized clearly reflect the best of our state. You can just sense it and hear it in their stories and the comments they've had. It's great to have that kind of acknowledgement and celebration. It makes you feel pretty good about our state and about the future we're all working together to try to build. Mitch, we're grateful to your leadership at Arkansas Business, which is a venerable uh, and a significant publication. And I want to acknowledge stateswoman journalist Gwen Moritz, who was former editor of Arkansas Business for her contribution, and Lance Turner as editor of Arkansas Business Thank you, and you've made a seamless transition as we were visiting this afternoon from digital to print. In the automotive sector, we may want a tutorial about that. When I first learned I was receiving this award, I found myself thinking about a comment that Andy Rooney had made 
on 60 Minutes. He said something like, everyone wants to live at the top of the mountain, but the real happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. I think he had it about right. The best part of the process of climbing the mountain is that it really never ends. And in my experience, the farther you go, the less important the summit becomes. And what really counts and what really matters are the people that you're meeting and working with along the way. People like the legion of colleagues and friends without whom I would simply not be standing here tonight and from whom I have learned so much from. To those of you here tonight, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your confidence, for your loyalty, and for your contribution. And to so many others who are not here tonight, who have had a direct support and influence on my career and my life. I am mindful and I am grateful to you to this day. And I certainly want to underscore, as I did in the video, that I am standing on the shoulders of my parents, Frank and Helen McClarty. My mother, indeed, was my kindest critic and my best cheerleader. And from a business standpoint, as some of you know very well, I know I would not be here tonight without my grandfather and particularly my father, who truly represented that greatest generation right out of World War II that Tom Brokaw wrote so poignantly and eloquently about in his great book. And people like the past recipients of this award, whose ranks I certainly proudly join. The late Wallace Fowler, who made such a mark on retail restaurants and banking and philanthropy, a great son of Jonesboro. Tommy May, a pillar of our community, a pillar of Pine Bluff, a model, a model of discipline and optimism and deep faith, who's done, done so much not only in banking but for the University of Arkansas and in so many other ways. And John L. Hunt, a generational and dear friend of our families and truly in a league of her own, whose contribution, business savvy, heart have helped fuel the success of J.B. Hunt, while making her someone who can deliver a no better than anyone I have ever known. And Sherman Tate, my longtime friend and colleague, who has been a trailblazer in government and business, not just as first, but also as standard setting best in what he's undertaken. And political leaders that I've had the privilege and good fortune to work with, beginning with my lifelong friend, the 42nd President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Indeed, Congressman, Governor, Senator David Pryor, whom I first met when I was 10 years old. And Donna and I have been blessed to travel many miles with Barbara and David Pryor, and boy, have they been good ones. And Governor and Senator Dale Bumpers, who I had the good fortune to serve in the legislature when Dale was first elected and later to work with him when I had the honor to serve in the White House. And so many others, Governor Tucker, Congressman French Hill, a former business partner and friend, Congressman John Paul Hammersmith, who was unfailingly thoughtful and supportive of me since I was at the University of Arkansas and all the years forward. And Secretary of Transportation and my Clinton colleague, Rodney Slater, 
a good man and a good friend who helps burnish the image and reputation of our state and so many others, dedicated public servants who have truly done so much to make our state and our country better. And people like Vic Nixon, our late pastor of Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, and all of the members of the community of faith, Dr. Robbins, thank you, and Susan for being here tonight, who help keep things in perspective for us and help us to remember what is truly important in our lives. Which brings me, of course, to my life partner and my soulmate, trusted advisor, and wife of 50 plus years, Donna. <laughs> simply put, simply put, the best decision by far that I ever made was to marry Donna K. Cochran. Donna, I love you. <clears throat> And I believe we've got some good passages ahead, and I look forward to them. My younger brother, Bud, my only brother, who is the creative and musical McClarty member of our family, whom we'll be seeing tomorrow when we travel to Arizona, and we're looking forward to that. Our sons, Mark and Franklin, fine and good people, whom Steve was kind enough to mention, distinguished leaders in their own right, who are carrying on their own endeavors into the next generation. Franklin is indeed a dynamic and persuasive entrepreneur. He helped establish and found with Steve Landers RML Automotive, and he does indeed have a natural knack for being a civic and political leader. And the phrase roots and wings inevitably comes to mind when I think about Mark, who has built such a broad-gauged and meaningful international career while maintaining deep roots here in Arkansas with his Mark McClarty Automotive Group and other investments. And I certainly want to include, and I would be remiss if I did not highlight our granddaughter, Brianna, who recently graduated from New York University and is embarking on her own life's journey. One of the joys of becoming a grandparent is seeing posterity made real. And that's why even though I'm mindful that this is a Legacy of Leadership Award, which implies kind of a retrospective, I don't want to reflect too much on the past but rather look forward to tomorrow. The inventor Charles Kettering once said that his interest was in the future because he was going to spend the rest of his life there. Well, my interest is in the future because that's where Brianna will spend hers joining her peers of the next generation. And being with all of you tonight and just hearing seeing the stories about Arkansas businesses, large and small, it can't help but give you encourage, encouragement and hope. To paraphrase a familiar line, the state of Arkansas business is strong. I have said sometimes, and perhaps many of you have as well, in fact, a few of you did tonight, that there must be something in the water about our home state that has produced so many successful and unique business successes, far beyond, far beyond what a state our size should be doing. And not just like the titans of Walmart and J.B. Hunt and Tyson's and Dillard's and Stevens and Murphy Oil, and Mount Air, and the list goes on and on, and our first-tier outstanding financial institutions, and so many more. But smaller and mid-sized businesses that are the heart 
of our state and our country in terms of job creation that we saw front and center tonight with great ideas and great people that they clearly recognize and value in terms of their leadership. But all of us really know, I think, this is not a fluke. It just didn't happen by chance. It stems from the values that are at our core, and you could hear and see that tonight. Values of faith and hard work and family, of extending a hand up and making a purposeful effort to kind of look out for the other fella or girl and putting our proverbial log on the woodpile. And I'm not talking just about business leaders and entrepreneurs. I'm really talking about people who get up every day and get the job done. Operating machinery and serving customers and caring for patients and driving trucks and farm tractors and so much more. The people whose dedication and skill and hard work that we all depend on to make our daily lives work in the right manner. You know, work orders life. And work brings forth a sense of dignity and purpose. And it helps communities to prosper. And it helps us to naturally pull in a common direction, which I think is more important than ever, because we see a lot of forces that seem to be pulling us apart. We've heard a lot about innovation tonight and technology, including AI, and there's no question that AI is going to be a major important part of our future. Having said that, I don't think AI can ever replace or substitute authentic commitment. It can't replace a personal and heartfelt connection and genuine support for one another and engagement with one another. And to me, and I think you see it tonight, that's what the Arkansas business community is really about. That's what it represents. And I hope it always will. Because if we can continue to help set a tone, a standard for the nation, it will continue to add luster to our state. So I'm honored and I'm humbled to celebrate this legacy. But most of all, I celebrate the future, a future with hope and promise and opportunity that all of us will have a chance to help manage and architect and build in the years ahead. The philosopher William James once said, the great use of a life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. If I can be allowed to think that perhaps my efforts that Steve spoke so generously about have helped to positively influence someone else's progress, giving them a boost along the way, well, that's just about the best reward of all and one that I will cherish and be grateful for. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mac. I am grateful that uh, Mr. McClarty would uh, allow us to honor his life and his work and recognize him in this way. You sh if you know anything about Mr. McClarty, you know this does not come easily for him. He's not one to stand up with uh, uh, looking for personal recognition and seeking a personal spotlight. And I've said this to him privately, and so I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it publicly, but I believe the world needs more leaders 
like Mr. McClarty, who lead with <laughs> leaders who lead with dignity and compassion and collaboration and, and vision. And we see political leaders today, we see religious leaders today, um, we see business leaders today who seem to fall short in every possible way. So if the leaders in this room who are building their careers, who are building their companies, who are building their communities, need someone to pattern their life after, I would look no further than Mr. McClarty and the standard he has set that has represented his family, his community, his state, his world in a, in a fantastic standard. So thank you very much. So. Thank you um, to all of you for joining us tonight. We are thrilled to have been able to recognize so many extraordinary uh, businesses who are making an impact across this state. We thank the, the, the finalists. We thank the winners. Uh, we look forward to incredible things in the future about how you are, uh, uh, in your direction and the things you're accomplishing. So congratulations as well. That's right. Yeah, absolutely, Mitch. It's been a wonderful night of celebrating each of these individuals and their organizations and all their accomplishments from efforts to improve community and initiatives to create more equity in the workplace to the entrepreneurial success and skill it takes to navigate businesses and organizations of all sizes through extraordinary times as such as these. We hope everyone here and at home have enjoyed celebrating these outstanding honorees, and we'd like to say a special thank you to all of tonight's sponsors, uh, the sponsors of tonight's award ceremony. We couldn't do it without That's you. Right. So so thank you very much for uh, kicking in tonight. Now, what also may have happened tonight is you're sitting there thinking, wait a minute, I know of an extraordinary company, an extraordinary nonprofit organization, and an extraordinary uh, executive who is doing meaningful work, and they should be recognized uh, for all the state to see. Well, you're in luck because you can nominate those folks for recognition in a future uh, award ceremony just like this. We are accepting nominations for the 36th annual Arkansas Business Awards. You're welcome to visit arkansasbusiness.com slash A-B-O-Y, that's Arkansas Business of the Year, to make your nominations. And we look forward to hearing from you because that's the first step in recognizing these companies is that we take these nominations. That does conclude our program tonight. Thank you for joining us in this room and online. Please, as a gift from us, feel free to take the small, uh, the centerpieces on your table. Take those with you as a, a, a commemorative note from tonight. Have a safe drive home. Thank you all very much.